Okay, so now that we went over polarity, um, we're going to go over intermolecular forces. Which have a lot to do with polarity. Okay, so there's three types. One, called London dispersion. Use the acronym LD to represent that. Two, dipole bipole. Use BD to represent that. And three, hydrogen bonding. I'll represent that H bond. Okay. So now that we know the three types, let's go over the first type called London dispersion. So, firstly, all molecules experience London dispersion. However, there's some factors that contribute to how much is experienced between different molecules. So the first one, size. The second one, is shape. So what size has to do with it is the bigger the molecule, means that it's going to have bigger London or greater London dispersion force. So for example, um, HF, it's based on your number of electrons. So HF <clears throat> only has um, 10 electrons in it. Whereas HCl has 18 electrons. Therefore, this would experience a higher um, London dispersion force than this because it has more electrons in the compound. So, what this means is that if you have an intermolecular force, um, it will lead to a greater bond between the molecule, leading to a greater. Um, um, higher melting and boiling point because the molecule is harder to break apart. So if you didn't take any other factors into play, the HCl that I drew is going to have a higher uh, melting and boiling point than the HF because it's larger molecule, has more electrons, therefore the London dispersion is bigger. So the other thing that affects it is shape. So let's say you have a tetrahedral shape. which is a relatively compact shape. But if you have one, for example, that's shaped more like this, this is a much greater surface area than this, meaning that it's gonna to stick to other um, molecules of its kind much more efficiently. Therefore, it's gonna have a higher London dispersion because it matches up with the other molecule that is shaped like that much better. It's going to have a higher London dispersion. Now, we go to our second one, which is called dipole bipole. So, all polar molecules have dipole bipole. If you remember from back when we were discussing about polar molecules, <clears throat> um, anyone that has a difference in electronegativity over the whole molecule is going to have one dipole-dipole. Uh, However, it's affected 
by the electronegativity difference. So let's say, for example, um, HF, this is, this is electronegativity of 4, this is electronegativity of 2.2. That means the electronegativity difference <coughs> is only 1.8. But if you have a molecule like, um, for example, CF, 4.0, 2.6, the electronegativity difference, 1.4. Therefore, this molecule, they're both going to experience dipole dipole, but this one's going to have a stronger dipole dipole force. Again, leading to a higher melting and boiling point. And both of these experience London dispersion. Um, this one experienced a little bit more because carbon has more electrons than hydrogen. So, <clears throat> yeah. Which brings us to our final one, which is called hydrogen bonding. So the only places that hydrogen bonding occurs is when there's a hydrogen molecule is attached to a nitrogen or an oxygen. The only exception to this rule is it can be attached to fluorine, but only in the compound HF. If it's HF2 or Anything else where there's more than HF, it won't happen. It has to be solely HF. There's no only place the hydrogen bonding is going to happen. So, for example, in H2O, there's hydrogen bonding between both of these hydrogens and the oxygen. But in CH4, There's no hydrogen bonding, even though there are four hydrogen molecules, because there's no, it's not bonding to a nitrogen or an oxygen. It's only a carbon. This would not have hydrogen uh, bonding, and this would. So what this means, as I briefly said before, these relate to the melting and boiling point of your molecules. So there's an order in which the strength of these occur. It actually is in the order that they're set. So the first one, strength, uh, the strength of the first one is um, on the dispersion, which is not very strong. Second one, dipole dipole. Third one, hydrogen bonding. So this is about five times more powerful than London dispersion, or dipole dipole is about five times more powerful than London dispersion. And hydrogen bond is about ten times more powerful than London dispersion. So if you have a molecule, for example, here, let's just do this, example one, which as I said before, the amount of intermolecular forces directly related to melting boiling points. So if it has very strong any of these, or all three, then it will have a very high melting point. If it doesn't have many of them at all, then it will have a very low one. Um, also, I should note that you cannot have hydrogen bonding without dipole-dipole because of a certain type of dipole-dipole force that's very um, specific. So, if you have CH4 and H2O, let's keep using those examples. So, first of all, you should draw this uh, Vesper diagram. So, CH4 looks like this. water looks like this. So, 
what you need to do is you need to look at the forces. So first of all, you need to look at the amount of electrons for your London dispersion. So this one, your carbon which has six and four hydrogens. So this is 10 electrons, not a very high London dispersion. This one is uh, also 10. So it's not very high either. This right here, referred to as isoelectric, meaning that you have the same number of electrons with a different molecule. So now we've covered that, you look at your dipole-dipole forces. Is this a polar molecule? Well, no, because carbon has a higher electronegativity. This is creating a slightly negative region. And on the outside, you have four slightly positive regions. So this is not polar. But this is polar, because oxygen has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen. Making two slightly positive regions, one slightly negative. Meaning that this region of the molecule is polar, or is slightly positive, and this one's slightly negative, making this polar. So because of this is polar, it also experiences dipole dipole. So this one has one dispersion and dipole dipole. This one just has one dispersion. Now, right there, you could say that because this one doesn't have, this one would be stronger, but let's take it a little further. You can see if that has hydrogen bonding. You know that this one is not polar because it doesn't have dipole dipole. So it cannot be hydrogen bonding. This one does have hydrogen bonding because there's a hydrogen bond into an oxygen. This one has H bond. So this is a very high melting point, this molecule, water. So this one's going to have a much higher melting point. So the answer to the question would be H2O. The more intermolecular forces you have, the higher the melting point.